Good morning, everyone. Our opening song will be No Greater Love. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down your life for a friend. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Live on in my love. You will live in my love if you keep my commands, even as I kept my Father's. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. All this I tell you that my joy may be yours and your joy may be complete. Love one another as I have loved you. This is my command. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. As we celebrate this feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, we ask his intercession as we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Frank Nafik and Frank Delat. Gathering our prayers into one, let us recognize our sinfulness before our God and turn to him for mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr, St. Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, mortal, make known to Jerusalem her abominations and say, thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, your origin and your birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to cleanse you, nor rubbed with salt nor wrapped in cloths. No eye pitied you to do any of these things for you out of compassion for you, but you were thrown out in the open field, for you were abhorred on the day you were born. I passed by you and saw you flailing about in your blood. As you lay down in your blood, I said to you, live and grow up like a plant of the field. You grew up and became tall and arrived at full womanhood. Your breasts were formed and your hair had grown, yet you were naked and bare. I passed by you again and looked on you. You were the, at the age for love. I spread the edge of my cloak over you and covered your nakedness. I pledged myself to you and entered into a covenant with you, says the Lord God, and you became mine. Then I bathed you with water and washed the blood from you and anointed you with oil. 
I clothed you with embroidered cloth and with sandals of fine leather. I bound you in fine linen, covered you with rich fabric. I adorned you with ornaments. I put bracelets on your arms, a chain on your neck, a ring on your nose, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown upon your head. You were adorned with gold and silver, while your clothing was of fine linen, rich fabric, and embroidered cloth. You had choice flour and honey and oil for food. You grew exceedingly beautiful, fit to be a queen. Your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty, for it was perfect because of my splendor that I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you trusted in your beauty and played the whore because of your fame and lavished your whorings on any passerby. Yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish with you an everlasting covenant in order that you may remember and be confounded and never open your mouth again because of your shame when I forgive you all that you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. You have turned from your anger to comfort me. You have turned from your anger to comfort me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. You have turned your anger to comfort me. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations. You have turned from your anger to comfort me. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You have turned from your anger to comfort me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Receive this message not as human words, but as truly the word of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? Jesus answered, have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together let no one separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command us to give a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her? Jesus said to them, It was because you are so hard-hearted that Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for unchastity and marries another commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But Jesus said to them, Not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe away our sin. Amen. We see in this beautiful passage from Ezekiel chapter 16, which we are currently studying in God Talk at this very time, beautiful reminder of the covenant that God makes with his people. He cleanses them of their blood, signifying sinfulness. He adorns them in white, baptism, and calls us his own. Again, through baptism, we are children of God. 
And so it is so important for us to identify, friends, that this unique, beautiful, sacred bond between God and us is so sacred and not to be taken lightly. We also see in the beautiful saint of the day, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, who as our opening song reminds us, he laid down his life for a friend. In his case, it was a stranger. Found at Auschwitz after being arrested during that terrible time of persecution, there was a man who had helped another escape and therefore was sentenced to death. This man was married and had children, and Maximilian, a priest, said, instead of him, take my life. And so he was executed for the sake of the gospel. I don't know if any of you have been to Poland. I've been to the very place, his very cell where he was executed. It is such a beautiful place. For again, we see the death of Jesus in that very spot. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down one's life for a friend. When's the last time you and I lay down our life for somebody else? How about a stranger, let alone a loved one? We live in a world where it's all about us. That's not what Maximilian Kolbe would say. A man who loved the Blessed Mother so much, who laid down her life for the sake of Jesus, huh? She was willing to do God's will no matter what it meant. She didn't understand, not totally at least, but she came to know and love God every day of her life. Maximilian Kolbe was inspired by this and brought hope to the people in the concentration camp. He had a difficult life. What is our excuse? For some of us, our crosses are heavy, and we use that as an excuse to continue to think about self. For some of us, we have a great life, and we continue to think about self. This is not the teaching of Jesus, is it? There's no greater love, says the Lord, than to just make sure you're okay. No. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down one's life for a friend. And throughout the scripture, what does Jesus say? I no longer call you servant, but friend. What a powerful image for us to reflect upon on this Friday of August. May we ask through the intercession of this very holy disciple of God to give us the courage, the ability to surrender to God's will and to lay down our life for the people we meet, our spouse, our children, our parents, our parishioners, this community of faith, the stranger that God puts on our path. Lord, help us to be like you. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Let us pray. Join together in God's holy presence. We pray for the needs of this assembly, the church, and the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all members of our holy church. May God look graciously upon our efforts and needs in serving his kingdom, we pray. Let us pray for all civic leaders. May the Holy Spirit lead them in the ways of charity and justice, we pray. Let us pray for married couples who face difficulties. May God's grace give them strength in their work towards reconciliation, we pray. Let us pray for our faith community of St. Joseph as we celebrate the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe. May God imbue in us a sacrificial love for one another, we pray. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our great diocese, we pray. Let us pray for an end to the spread of the coronavirus, for all those affected by the virus, that they may be healed by Jesus, the divine physician, for all frontline and medical workers for their safety and endurance, and for all those who have died as a result of the virus and the families left behind, that God may be their comfort and peace, we pray. Let us pray for all who have died. We remember especially Frank and Frank, the holy souls in purgatory, and all who have died. May they find eternal joy and comfort in the presence of God, our loving Father, we pray. And for all the intentions we hold within the silence of our hearts.
Loving Father, we ask that you look favorably on the prayers of this assembly and grant them according to your will. We ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian Kolbe to offer our very lives to you. Through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember your servants, Frank and Frank, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Maximilian Kolbe, with Saint Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. All those who are receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me 
to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian Kolbe received from this holy banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, 
cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is a very special day in the Church, the Feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother. Course Mass, like every day, is at 9 o'clock, and the Holy Hour will follow. I invite you all to make sure that you attend Mass as we give thanks and praise to God for the disciple that we call our Blessed Mother. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down your life for a friend. You are my friends if you keep my commands, no longer slaves, but friends to me. All I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Now I call you friends. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down your life for a friend. It was not you who chose me, it was I who chose you, chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure so that you will receive all you ask the Father in my name. There is no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down your life for a friend. There is no greater love, no greater love, than to lay down your life for a friend. God bless you.